a lot of what you're doing is going after the business of the oil companies. Are they just sitting by and watching this happen, or are they trying to play defense, or do they think, as some people have suggested, that EVs will, electric vehicles, will roll out so slowly and global petroleum demand is growing that they don't have to worry about this? Well, an interesting Quite thing is happening right now. Um, the oil companies have, the oil and gas companies have started referring to themselves as energy companies. Right. They're not so interested in being oil and gas companies anymore as they are being global energy providers. And they're looking for any type of energy, no matter what that might be, they're going to follow the dollar. Um, and the bottom line is, you know, somebody like Jay, who has been driving an electric vehicle for a decade, in other words, Jay was EV before EV was cool. <laughs> but with all respect, Jay's not the customer. Jay's the earliest of early adopters. He saw this before anybody else did, but the bottom line is Nissan and Exxon and Chevron and Toyota and GM are not going to pay attention until the average housewife in Iowa, for example, gets interested in electric vehicles. That's really where the market has to get to in order for us to build up enough volume to make this a viable business. And right now, we've been using a cell phone uh, metaphor Let's stay with that metaphor for a second. I would say that we're in the gestational stage of this industry right now. And I would compare uh, where we are today, where the cell phone industry was in maybe 1987. The big brick phones, $4 a minute, yeah. big, you know, large, whippy rubber <laughs> antennas. Cell phones don't even have antennas anymore. And you short certainly life couldn't. Batteries. You, you short life batteries, and you better not charge it until you've drained it all the way down because then it'll remember that setting and you've got half the battery that you used to have. And then the last thing is you had to stay very, very still while you made a phone call. There certainly was no driving and talking at the same time. It took 10 or 15 years before that, that uh, industry matured. And, and, and McKinsey famously way underestimated the adoption of cell phones. They didn't anticipate, thought it would be a tiny market and it exploded. So it gets to Vinod Coastal and others who make the point about predicting uh, market adoption of uh, consumer electronics. Well, and, and one more point that I'd like to make about that, Jonathan mentioned having dinner with Bill Ford. Well, Bill's great-great-grandfather, Henry Ford, they initially, you know, after he changed the entire world, and we all know Henry Ford didn't invent the automobile. What he invented was the assembly line. That was his huge contribution. When people asked him years later, how did you know to do that? How did you know that that's the way the direction of the industry was going to go, as opposed to hand-built, horseless carriages? His famous quote was, if I had asked the public what they wanted, I would have built a faster horse. So a lot of times you can't necessarily wait or predict or, or let the, the uh, public tell you which way it's going to go. You need to, as Mitsubishi did, set a very ambitious goal and not really figure out until you get there how you're going to get there. And a fur further answer to your question about the oil companies, um, we were the first ones that have been invited to, first time electric vehicles have been invited to the table with big oil. We're partners with BP, we're rolling out fast chargers in BP and Arco stations up and down highways in Tennessee, in California, in Washington and Oregon. Um, so they recognize 90% of, uh, of gas stations are franchisees of big oil. 80% um, of their revenue comes from the C store. Uh, so so if, they make more money selling donuts than yeah, yeah. Slurpees yeah. and hot dogs, boy. That's yeah. that's their business, and yeah. they'd rather sit, they'd like to see you in there for a 15-minute charge. Exactly. That's a really <laughs> that's a really interesting point because you're traveling down a highway and you stop at the convenience store and get your fast charge. It makes a tremendous amount of sense, um, and and I really think that you the the, um, the purveyors, the, you know, the gas stations for, for that, are going to want you there longer. And by the way, we're going to see Starbucks there, or we're going to see uh, yeah. McDonald's. or you know, So think about places where you spend half an hour. That's where you're going to charge in a fast charge. Fast charge. And it doesn't matter. They can make little or no money on electricity because they're going to get you in the store on higher margin products. But we're going to do more than that. We've got 42-inch screens there that are going to advertise that Slurpee inside and drag you inside. We're going to advertise other media models on that, and we're going to be sharing that media income with the uh, franchisees. It's all about building a recurring revenue base for uh, this infrastructure that's not reliant on reselling electricity.